Hello, the time is 18.30 hours Central African time. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Prime Time News on Movie Television. We look at the stories making the headlines this evening. Recruitment targets all professionals and not only health workers, HH has said. Heavy rains blow off roofs of four classroom blocks in Kasama. Nakachinda advised government to stop hiding its inefficiency in opposition parties. President HH pay has paid an impromptu visit at MOH amid cries of a shortage of drugs. And Petauke MP tells Pali to begin the translation of proceedings into local languages. He can also tune in to watch this news live on Facebook via social media handle Ask Movie TV. With the details of the news, my name is Keith Mwemba. Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Gary Combo says government is determined to create conducive and designated areas for traders to conduct their businesses in the country. Mr. Nkombo has since urged traders to ensure that they occupy current markets and shelters as opposed to trading on the streets, which is causing disorder in towns. He was speaking Wednesday when he addressed traders during the national rollout joint launch for funeral policy and data capture in the informal economy for economic, social and health empowerment. Sphere our life. You said some of the banks of the some of the streets, some even in designated places. And we are doing our best to try to reorganize ourselves so that everybody, as much as possible, gets back to the designated trading places for more profitability, for more organization. Because if we organize ourselves in the manner that we ought to be to do, as the dictate of the current legislation that governs the area of marketing, which is linked to the area of travel, bus station, because those are focal point areas where people pass, I can assure you that even your profitability will be much more than the way it is now, where people insist that they will be vending, they burn energy, they will be hawkers. They burn a lot of energy walking back and forth from place to place and sometimes even knock off nothing. We are determined as a government to ensure that as we get a long, long journey of life, we provide the services, the facilities that will promote. Christian Churches Monitoring Group CCMG Programs Manager Peter Mwanangombe has called on the Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, to take deliberate steps to improve its engagement with the civil society and also engage stakeholders prior to and during boundary delimitation, delimitations. Rather. Speaking at a Christian Churches Monitoring Group 2021 General Elections Final Report launch in Lusaka, Mr. Mwanangombe says ECZ failed to engage civil society on key decisions including implementation of the Electoral Code of Conduct and other key aspects of 2021 electoral cycle. He has further urged ECZ to hold regular consultation with civil society organizations in advance of all electoral processes. He also noted that ECZ should enhance its engagement and collaboration with the Zambia Statistics Agency and political parties. The Patriot Crown PF Publicity and Information Secretary Rafael Nakachinda has urged the ruling United Party for National Development UPND to focus on solving serious challenges Zambians are facing whenever citizens have the privilege to address matters openly in the country. Speaking in an interview with Movie TV News, Mr. Nakachinda says government should put a stop to the habit of distracting issues whenever they, they, brought, they are brought out by members of the general public. He says people are dying due to shortage of drugs in hospitals. We have an issue now of uh, shortage of drugs in hospitals and people are dying. That is a, a big scandal. 
but they don't want the Zambian people to interrogate that as issue. Hence now the arrest of Luwinda, the arrest of Malangi, and they continue at the arrest of officials from patriotic front. You have an issue now of uh, shortage of drugs in hospitals and people are dying. That is a, a big scandal. Then it should not be permitted. They will be harassed, you know, inconvenienced, destabilized, hopefully brought back to the days of poverty. In Zambia, we should never glorify poverty. We should celebrate people when they work hard and uh, get something. We don't even have rich people. President Haga in the Hijlema says mindset change and skills development is key for creating successful youth in the country. Speaking in a speech read on his behalf by Republican Vice President Mitalena Lumango during the official opening of the International Youth Fellowship Bethel Resource Center in Chilanga, President Hijlema says government has prioritized skills training and mindset change for youths as a key component in re remedying challenges of the, 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 the I beg your pardon? President Haga in the Hijlema says government has prioritized skills training and mindset change for youths as a key component in remedying challenges they are facing. Mr. Hijlema says government will ensure that every district has a youth resource center to capture as many youths as possible. And Minister of Youth, Sport and Arts Elvis Nkandu says the opening of the youth resource center is timely as it will teach youth life survival skills. Youth resource center founder Oak Park says putting Jesus Christ on the center to bring about mindset change Youth will be taught various skills such as construction and computer courses. Dr. Park says the Youth Resource Center will also engage the rehabilitation of youth from prisons as well as those addicted to drugs. The HDMA says government is open to partnerships that are aimed at uplifting the lives of youths in the country. Speaking during the official launch of the International Youth Fellowship Resource Center in Chilanga, through a speech read on his behalf by Republican Vice President Mutaina Rumango, President Hichilema says training youths in various skills is key for national development. project and program is targeting the young people. Here we say, Mitikula, and the youth make the future. But the youth that are not trained will not make a good future. And therefore, this institution is truly targeting the right people for the beautiful future of tomorrow. The beautiful future of our nation. President Ichirema says government will therefore ensure that every district has a youth resource center. Given the importance attached to skills training in improving the livelihoods of the youth by our government, we have prioritized skills training in order to create employment, especially for our youths and women. We are therefore happy to partner with the stakeholders who share similar aspirations. Minister of Education Douglas Siakalima represented the Minister of Youth, Sport and Arts at the event. The development of the centre will therefore provide skills and knowledge that will enable the young people to regain their confidence and participate in the different platforms of national development. Further, the Youth Resource Centre being open today is expected to train young people in different skills that will transform their mindset to be positive and patriotic citizens. Lusaka Province Minister Shaw Muliata was also present at the launch. I wish to reiterate the new John government's position that government shall ensure that a platform that will be provided for the youth will enable young people to assimilate many youth empowerment programs being rolled out. Founder of the International Youth Fellowship Resource Center, Oak Park of South Korea, later during a press briefing, highlighted some of the activities to be conducted at the center. 
Zambia Boden so it's for all the youths of Zambia. So we're going to hold camps during summer vacation. So we're going to teach many individuals have personal sessions. We're going to teach them computers. And about construction. We're going to teach. And also learn the world of the heart. That's what we're going to do. The Youth Resource Center has been constructed at a total cost of $2 million and will see youths from various parts of the country trained at no cost. The Youth Resource Center has been established through a memorandum of understanding between government under the Ministry of Youth, Sport and Arts with the International Youth Fellowship that was signed in 2015 and its construction commenced in 2016. For Movie TV News, I'm Afia Skaptola in Lusaka. You're watching the Prime Time News at 1830 in Movie TV. We take our first set of commercials. We'll be right back. Bet your way with Betway. We are delighted to add Lubumbashi and Goma to our network. Welcome aboard Rwandair, Africa's safest airline that will connect you to more than 24 destinations throughout the network. Rwandair, fly the dream of Africa. As COVID-19 cases keep rising, many business entities are affected and their revenue keeps going down. But together, we can fight COVID-19. Rumpi Enterprises provides you and your organization the safety you require in these hard times of the COVID-19 pandemic by using effective disinfectants procedures such as knockdown and residual disinfecting that helps prevent and get rid of COVID-19. We do knockdown and residual disinfecting procedures for homes, offices, hospitals, churches, and many more. Protect yourself and the people around you and get your business running with our powerful trusted disinfectants. Call Rumpy Enterprises on 0955-767835 or 0955-992230 or come to the third floor, room 3, Tazara House, corner of Dedan Kimati and Independence Avenue. Follow us on Facebook, Rumpy Enterprises Limited. Always remember to observe the COVID-19 guidelines. Mask up, sanitize, social distancing and stay. Welcome back. Republican President Haga in the Hijlam on Thursday morning paired an impromptu visit at the Ministry of Health Ndeke headquarters to check on the operations amidst heightened public outcry over the shortage of essential medical drugs in various health centers. The president stormed the Ministry of Health around 10 hours with a call on the officials to make to made drugs available to the people upon demand at the right time. However, the head of state says the picture being portrayed in the media is different from what he has learned on the ground. He was speaking shortly after conducting a visit at the Ministry of Health. From a questionable procurement system to a flawed mass recruitment process, and now a lack of essential medicines and medical supplies in all health facilities countrywide. These are just some of the scandals that the Ministry of Health has entangled itself in over the past few months. This has now forced President Haka in the Hichilema to move from State House and physically spend one working day at Ministry of Health headquarters in Lusaka. After holding a closed door meeting with various officials, including the Minister of Health, Sylvia Masebo, President Haka in the Hichilema says what is circulating in the media is different from what is on the ground. He adds that drugs should be available to people upon demand. We are, we are delighted that we came over here uh, to have an interaction with the ministry, Minister of Health, on a number of issues, but particularly 
focusing on how we can work together to ameliorate the perceived or real issue of drug shortage in our health facilities. So we have had good conversations around this issue to isolate where the challenges may be. Hear me? To isolate where the challenges may be and basically how to resolve those challenges. Working as a team with the ministry with an intention, single-minded intention to ensure that drugs are available for our people when they are in need of those drugs. And the meeting revealed to us quite a number of issues. Some are straightforward and they're being dealt with. Some require a bit of interrogation. But there is also appears to be a mismatch between what is being said and what is actually on the ground. Why do I say so? We were able to engage with the provincial medical officer. I think all of them almost yes. in, in the ten provinces. We had a virtual meeting after our first stage meeting with the minister and team PSs and others, and then we engaged the provincial medical officer who gave us the situation on the ground. So hopefully the publicity side uh, of the ministry, Minister and TSS, you will now pick it up to deliver the message to the public as to what the actual situation obtaining on the ground is. So that we take out distortions and remain with facts. On the issue of mass recruitment of over 11,000 health workers, President Hichilema says the process must be done transparently. You are aware is the recruitment of 11,000 plus medical staff. We covered that area as well and looked at the issues at hand and made sure that we don't continue with the recruitment process without dealing with issues that may result in maybe misapplication or misallocation of the medical staff as required on the grounds. President Hichilema has warned all government institutions that State House is not his only office and he may be visiting them anytime soon. This should be normal going forward. Today you will see at the Health Ministry. Tomorrow the President will be at Lance. I may be at local government or maybe elsewhere. This is something you must expect going forward. That's a message. Because the president's office is not set up. The president is a servant working with ministers, working with permanent secretaries, working with yourself to make sure that we improve service delivery to the people's country. So you better get used to this. Virginia Chilongo, Movie TV News, Lusaka. Petauke Central Member of Parliament Emmanuel J. Banda has asked the National Assembly to quickly consider coming up with modalities of ensuring to the translation of the parliamentary proceedings into languages in order to accommodate every citizen. Mr. Banda says it is clear most Zambians are left out on the parliamentary discussions due to limitation in understanding English the problem which must be worked on. He said this when he rose on a point of order in Parliament. There's a point of order. What is the point of order, the Honourable Member for Petauke? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I've just received an email from the good people of Petauke uh, complaining uh, seeing their minister who represent them uh, participating in parliament, but those uh, who are deaf, they are not following the, uh, the proceeding. So they are asking if we, the National Assembly, they can start interpreting on uh, parliament TV so that they can be also following the proceeding, Madam Speaker. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will reserve my ruling so that we 
We invest, get further and come up with something to render to the House. Opposition Third Liberation Movement President Enoch Tonga has passed a vote of no confidence in President Haga in the Kishlema and the new Dawn government's fight against corruption. Mr. Tonga says President Hijilema's fight and pronouncement against corruption is not genuine and will add no value to the nation, stating already some of his officials have been captured by the corrupt system. Meanwhile, Mr. Tonga says the best way of fighting corruption is to ensure the three arms of government are given total independence in their operations. He was speaking when he featured on Movie TV's special interview. Where the problem is, mm is the presidency the president of the republic of zambia that is where the problem is forget about as an individual the president the, the presidency the, the office the presidency of the office. The president, yes and there's a person there sitting right away we're talking about one kind that is where the problem is it's as simple as all that you have the legislature which is the parliament you've got the judiciary which is the uh, the courts of yeah. law. You've got the executive. Mm. The overall boss there becomes the head of state. Don't be cheated in Africa, Zambia in particular, that the, these institutions are independent of one another. It's a very simple thing. So you have a player here who is a, at the same time a referee and he has interest in the happenings. Go to America. You had one Donald J. Trump. That man governed America for about four years. For four years. Now, my point I want to bring to attention is yes. that when you have got independent institutions of governors, anybody can be the president. Even a madman can be there. But as it is in Africa, you have given this office called the president so powerful. So in, 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 in how can I put it, in the mind of a, a common man, you can easily believe that, yes, there's independency in terms of uh, the judicial, legislature, and the executive. It is not there. There is a serious exertion or pressure from the executive on all these arms of government. So then you have a problem. You have a speaker of the National Assembly who is linked directly to a political party in power. What do you expect that person to do? And then you want to believe that, uh, no, we are running a government independently. You are, you are, you are cheating the people. You have got uh, judges who are sitting in the High court, whatever it is, who are appointed by the head of state. Come on. You have got the DPP appointed by an individual. What are you talking about? So, the president is a problem. So, if you want to change the, whole, the core scenario, bring in a human being who does not believe in being worshipped as a god. That person begins to change these institutions to be independent. And that has to be started by a person. Even if we say we call for reforms here and there, as long as that head of state is not interested in reforms, they don't happen because they want to protect their own political interest. So there should be Enoch Roosevelt Tonga, who believes in independence of these I mean these institutions. Mm -hmm. We talked about uh, the removal of immunity. Yeah. Go into the presidency without immunity. Those were seven golden pillars that we had when we were doing the campaigns in 2021, which nobody wants to listen to us. Today, the NDH is in public office. Why is he not telling the nation, say, no, I want to be the president without the immunity? What's, it, what's his fear? If indeed he thinks can govern the Republic of Zambia, you know, corrupt free. That is the problem. Because for me, I'm the head of state today. I'll tell you the following morning, remove the immunity. I don't need the jacket. So that anybody must feel that I'm like any other common person. What we want to do here is that we want to see these institutions independently. There isn't such a thing. It's all rhetorics and games with the people's minds. And people think, yeah, it's a government that is independent. There's nothing like that. So there's always this influence. Because they are attached to the head of state. They're answerable. Therefore, you expect changes. The speaker does something else, the guys the rushes to the courts of law, they also decide otherwise. It's as simple as all that. Beyond that, corruption sits at the center of these de developments. That's why I've talked about a non bearable on corruption. The Alliance of Mayors Initiative for Community Action and AIDS at the local level, AMICO, is setting in Kabo district to reflecting on this importance of local-led multi-sectorial action whose components support the national policies. Amico chairperson Champion Tembo says the strategy of Amico is inclusive as it 
articulate the needs of local people as well as local authorities. Mr. Tembo says there is need for the members to make AMICO a better institution that will help all local authorities in the country to be gender sensitive as they respond to different experiences of men and women in terms of vulnerability, response impact. The AMICO chairperson, who is also Chilanga District Council chairperson, expressed happiness when he noted the unity that exists among the members, especially in times of bereavement. He says the actions of Alliance and its members represent concrete examples of how local governments must work. And speaking earlier, Cabo Municipal Council Chairperson Patrick Chishela implored the Alliance to make resolutions that will alleviate the challenges faced by most councils across the country. Mr. Chishela says the AMICO meeting is very important, especially that it informs national policy, which in turn supports a more enabling environment for sustained responses and strengthening management and financial systems at the local level to provide the foundation of scaling up response to the epidemic. And decisions uh, on those issues. Uh, this is so that eventually we can make AMICO a better institution so that we can help our councils with the activities related to HIV and AIDS to actually move smoothly. We should also be able to impart the knowledge that we get from here back to our councils and encourage those that are not represented in the steering committee to also move uh, with us. You, at the end of the day, come up with resolutions which will help uh, the local uh, authorities across the nation. This is a very important meeting and I want to believe that um, uh, everything has been put in place for the smooth running of the meeting this afternoon. The Ministry of Health targets to vaccinate more than 400,000 children aged five years and below under the first poll of polio under the first round of polio vaccination in Eastern Province. Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Paul Tolle officially launched the polio vaccination at the Provincial Health Office today. Mr. Tolle has called on government officials, traditional leaders, religious authorities, parents and caregivers to join the national, to join the national effort to prevent polio. More in the following report. The provision of good health services safeguards the lives of children in various communities. Eastern Province Permanent Secretary Paul Tolle has officially launched the first phase of the polio vaccination program in Eastern Province. As a province, we want to ensure all the targeted 443,175 children aged between 0 and 5 years are vaccinated against polio during this first round. The rest of the rounds will be conducted at least four weeks apart. If your child has received the polio vaccine before, they should still receive the vaccine during this campaign to increase protection against polio. After the official launch of the vaccination at the provincial health office in Chipata district, Mr. Tole went to Mchini Health Post to officially flag off the program by vaccinating some children. And Eastern Province Health Director Gideon Zulu gave an overview of the polio vaccination program. We target every child under five years old and vaccinate them against the, the, the disease. Now, polio, as you may be aware, causes paralysis. Okay? Once you are paralyzed with polio from childhood, it means you remain like that into adulthood. Now the strategy we are employing, because we do not want to leave any child behind, we are going door to door. When we approach your health, your household there, we, we, we are asking that you open up the household, bring out all the children that are under five years, and we give them the oral polio vaccine. And the way we are doing it is just two drops in the mouth, and then your child is protected during this first round. Government is effectively working in partnership with various stakeholders to ensure that it safeguards the lives of the local citizenry, especially children. Sylvester Shimba for Zanis in Chipata District, Eastern Province. 
The resumption of our picture of the day segment will look at what characterized in the Zambian National Assembly on Wednesday afternoon on the apology rendered by Lomezi MP Munia Zulu after being forced by Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly. Ringing. Honorable Member, to the attention of the executive order, honorable member, affecting the people we represent in the House order, in compliance. Order, Honorable Member, I'm sure you have a script before you, not permitted. Madam Speaker, reading a speech that I do not own. This is not my speech. It has been given to me. It's not my speech. So if I omit... Well, the rules of the... My dance is fair enough. I'll read what has been given to me because I don't own this speech. So let me read it. So permit me to read then. Because it's not my speech. Permit me to read because I don't own this speech. Let me read it. Ojiji Nkombo, Minister of Local Government and Rural Development. Madam, comma, having reflected on my conduct, comma, which amounts to a breach of parliamentary privileges and contempt of the House, comma, I wish to sincerely apologize to Honorable Ojiji Nkombo, comma, MP, comma, for the injury caused to his persona that my statement on KBN television may have caused. Paragraph 3 reads, and I quote, I assure you, comma, Madam, comma, and this August House, that, comma, Thank you, Madam, Madam. You still watching the primetime news. We take another set of commercials. We'll be right back. The Zambia Statistics Agency will this year conduct the census across the country. The census aims to count people in households, rural and urban, hospitals, military, police and correctional facilities. This numbering will extend to hotels, farms, as well as high density areas with different families sharing a house and those in transitory locations. Every person in the country matters and should be counted because the census will benefit all from migrants, refugees and street children, homeless people, the young and the old people, as well as persons with disabilities. Everyone counts. This message is brought to you by the Zambia Statistics Agency. University College is enrolling students for the January-April 2022 intake in the following. School of Education, Bachelor of Education in Early Childhood Education, Bachelor of Education in Primary Education, Bachelor of Education in Secondary Education, Bachelor of Education in Special Education, Diploma in Early Childhood Education, Diploma in Primary Education, Diploma in Secondary Education, Diploma in Special Education, Certificate in Early Childhood Education, School of Humanities and Social Sciences, Diploma in Public Relations, School of Hotel and Tourism, Diploma in Food and Production, Diploma in Front Office, Diploma in Food and Beverages Management, Diploma in Hospitality and Events Management, and Diploma in Sales and Marketing. For more information, visit us at Regent College along Quasi Road or the North Mid Campus at plot number 11 Luamba Road, Lusaka, or call us on 0955-787114 or 0966-787114 or 0977-787114. Fairview University College, we aim at excellence.
Welcome back and now for the rest of the stories. President Haga Indehijlema says the mass recruitment of health workers will not only be focused on doctors but all essential health workers. He says a health system cannot be effective with only one profession. The president has disclosed the advert for recruitment will be published on Friday, 25th March 2022. The head of state says his government will not continue the inefficiencies of the previous government. He was speaking Thursday afternoon at the Ministry of Health headquarters. Say, let's just do it. Those days are over. We just do things and do them wrong. Those days are over. We are doing it properly, and I think the processes will be articulated very soon, and we will be very pleased in the sense that we are matching the health facilities across the country with the personnel needs. Medical personnel, but also skill sets. Not just doctors, you get it right? It's not just doctors, please. I think the minister is going to It's not just medical doctors. It's health staff, health workers. Can you operate in a world which is not cleaned up? We need a cleaner, isn't it? The cleaner is a health worker. Even that has to be much properly. So I, I said earlier on that we can improve the patient to health worker so, yes, that's being addressed. I think it will commence to continue that Tomorrow the advert is coming up. But we are also focused on inclusiveness. In the past, we have had situations when we recruit, only certain people get into Jobs in the public sector must be available for all citizens, fairly across the country. That's part of our agenda. Heavy rains have blown off the roofs of four classroom blocks and a structure housing weekly border at Mungkonge Day Secondary and Primary Schools in Kasama District. Mungkonge Day Secondary and Head Teacher Eunice Kasaka said three blocks from the secondary section and one block at the primary section have been affected by the disaster which occurred last week on Thursday following a heavy downpour. Mrs. Kasaka says a total of seven classrooms and the head teacher's office were affected by the disaster at the two schools. She disclosed that various items such as school furniture, stationery and foodstuff have have had been damaged. She added the pupils from the secondary section have since moved to an almost complete one by four classroom block which is being constructed by Solon Foundation but is yet to be handed over to the school. Mrs. Kasaka says the school has also employed temporary measures to ensure that learning continues. She says pupils coming from far away villages who camp at the school during the week, hence we cannot afford the close of school. She said, and, Ms. and Kasama District Commissioner Elizabeth Goma says, government is urgently looking into the matter to ensure that the situation at the school is quickly normalized. Mrs. Goma said this when she visited the school with a group of experts to assess the extent of damage. She adds, work hard, work hard, already began in the background as bill of quantities, BOQs, were being done by the team that had visited the school earlier. She assured management that government was working tirelessly to ensure that the matter is quickly resolved. She further commended management for the initiative employed to ensure that learning continues despite the challenging situation. Meanwhile, Bidding's officer at Ed District Education Board Secretary's Office, Debs, and member of the Disaster Management Committee Frank Zimba said works on the BOQs were underway and would soon be submitted to relevant authorities for further action. He indicated that while some buildings may be renovated, others would need to be completely demolished as they were substandard and in a deplorable state. We now take the final break. We still have more stories. Don't go away.
So here's how to pay using Airtel money. Ensure your decoder is turned on and tuned to channel 1. Dial star 778 hash, then select the option that says Make Payment. Select Pay TV, then select Movie TV. Enter the 12-digit smart card number, then enter the amount you wish to pay. Enter the Movie TV account number, omitting the dash before the last digit. Then select the amount you wish to pay. For inquiries, call Customer Care on 0764-250055 or 0764-250052 or 0978-732-411 or 0978-732-412. The Sheikh District Commissioner Alex Namenda has commended Greenland Conservation's efforts in helping government in ensuring a clean and healthy environment is sustained through the continued use to plant more trees countrywide. Mr. Namenda, who was speaking at the ceremonial tree planting in Sesheke, adding that the initiative will help in the boosting of the economy as trees may play a vital role in having a sustainable climate change. He further noted government will always be in support of such innovative ideas by working hand in hand with other organizations that are willing to come on board to fight against deforestation and minimize the effects of global warming and climate. Meanwhile, Western Province Regional Director Proud Banda stated people need to emulate and put to practice what the organization has started as it is bound to yield positive results. And on that note, we end the primetime news this evening. To wrap up, we look at headlines once again. Recruitment targets all professionals and not only health workers, HH has said. Heavy rains blow off roofs of four classroom block in Kasama. Nakachinda advised government to stop hiding its inefficiencies on opposition parties. President H.H. paid an impromptu visit at MOH and meets Christ over shortage of drugs. And Petauke MP tells Pali to begin the translation of proceedings into local languages. Well, thank you so much for having joined us for the primetime news this evening. Remember, I'll be back at 21.15 hours with the main news. On behalf of the entire production crew, my name is Keith Mumba. Good evening. is too high and no road is too long in search of the extraordinary we are the specialists of lifestyle europe This is DW News Asia. Coming up today, Afghanistan schoolgirls betrayed by their country's rulers. The Taliban had promised girls could attend secondary school, but at the last minute, they changed their minds. Where does that leave Afghanistan's girls? I ask a former MP and women's rights activist. And in some lighter news, why an instant noodle shop has become a hit with students in Thailand. I'm Biresh Panaji. Welcome to DW News Asia. Glad you could join us. Afghanistan's girls are distressed. Many are in tears. A last minute turnaround by the Taliban on allowing girls to attend secondary school has left many wondering about their place in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. Dreams for the future crushed once again. 
The Taliban's sudden reversal means girls above the sixth grade can't go to school until further notice. They threw our dreams in the dirt. We are girls and we want to become doctors or engineers, but they don't want us to study at all. Is it a sin that we are girls? Is it a sin that we study? Just a few hours earlier, these classrooms were filled with hope. Learning again after seven months stuck at home. But by midday, the Taliban broke its promise, a decision that the U.N. has called a major setback for Afghan girls. The Secretary General says the denial of education not only violates the equal rights of women and girls to education, it also jeopardizes the country's future in view of the tremendous contributions by Afghan women and girls. The Taliban Education Ministry has offered little in the way of explanation, saying... In Afghanistan, especially in the villages, the mindsets are not ready. We have some cultural restrictions. Still, schoolgirls came by the thousands for opening day, a sign that many families do believe their daughters deserve an education. The Islamic Emirate says we must live according to Islamic laws. So they need to please open the schools because it is in the Quran that both men and women are allowed to continue their education and study. No matter what these girls want for their future, they must wait for the men in power to decide if it is possible. And joining me now for more is former MP and women's rights activist Fozia Kufi. She was the first woman deputy speaker of Afghanistan's parliament and has sat across the table from the Taliban as a negotiator during talks in Doha. Ms. Kufi, welcome. Uh, help us make sense of this. What do you think prompted this sudden turnaround from the Taliban? Well, it's a very um, uh, shocking and complicated um, uh, decision, I would say. Um, uh, yesterday, a lot of people in Afghanistan, 35 million or so, were mourning, basically. Not only girls who were deprived, but I think everyone who had a heart and who have a heart was um, disappointed with the, you know, with, with the change of position, I would say. Well, the reasoning is that um, that the girls should be, um, should go to school within the principles of Islam. Their uniform should be according to the Afghan cultural, uh, cultural values. But from my perspective, these are just um, excuses. Um, uh, their sudden decision to revert the initial announcement indicates that there is a, um, a division and that the Taliban are not, uh, you know, making decision on a cohesive basis and there is no chain of command. Um, you know, people at lower level or ministerial level have a different um, level of decision-making power. People at the higher level have a decision uh, higher, uh, you know, they control basically everything. And the important question is, like, who is basically the main decision-making body within Taliban. That is something we have been telling um, for the past 10 years, that who are we negotiating, who is the one making the decision. And this is obvious in, in, in the case of uh, Taliban not allowing girls to go to school, despite their previous announcement, is that there is a, a huge division and they are divided. Uh, when you speak of uh, division, does that also imply that therefore there is at least one part in the Taliban that do want girls who return to school, to secondary schools? <laughs> They could have many motives. One of the motives is yes, because their own girls go to school um, and I have visited their families, I have met their families, their girls, their boys, um, that they go to school, that they their families mainly for most of the leadership are not in Afghanistan, they are living in different countries, their children attend, you know, high quality education um, and universities. One motive could be that because their own family members go to school, go to work, and they understand the value of education. The second motive could be that, you know, because they want to normalize so, sort of their relationship with the world, and the world has been emphasizing so much on girls' education that it has become a matter of bargaining for, for Taliban. For some hardliner, it's a matter of, you know, taking the girls hostage um, uh, so that uh, the world gave them more. And for some others uh, who are, so to say, pro-girls' education, it's 
for them to show that they have changed, that they want to like have a, um, a better relationship with the world. So they have different motive, but whatever motive it is, I my understanding is that there is a division, and I call on those actually through this channel uh, within Taliban who uh, who believe that their girls should go to school, should speak up, should raise their voice, um, because it's not only a matter of girls' education; it's for the future of Afghanistan. And if they really claim that they they are Afghans, they belong to that territory, they need to stand now. Uh, I'm just curious, um, and, and, and I'm sorry I'm belaboring the point, but you have, uh, let's call them the pragmatists whose uh, children go to school abroad, uh, some of them girls, and then you have the hardliners who don't want Afghan girls to go to schools. How do the uh, pragmatists reconcile uh, their children going to school with the views of the hardliners within the Taliban itself? Very soon, they are, this uh, fragmentation is going to going, uh, going to evolve further, I think, um, and uh, uh, those hardliners uh, either will be marginalized or they will have the whole control, depending on, right. on the situation one has to see. Um, but my assumption is that um, th there is a fragmentation, and that fragmentation was not obvious during the time that they were a small group fighting in the mountains. It's going to even you know deepen and deepen with the fact that they are now they're fighting over power, over resources over everything, over issues. So this is going to even deepen uh, over time. So if the, if the pragmatists are going to be marginalized, where does this leave Afghanistan's girls and their hopes for education? Um, well, I mean, Afghanistan is the only country in the world um, from the Muslim and non-Muslim countries where women are not allowed to work, where girls are not allowed to school, and education where there is no woman in public life. And that makes the situation exceptionally disappointing and exceptionally devastating, I would say. And so, therefore, I think um, it's not even about girls' uh, hopes, which is important. It's not about, uh, even about the politics. It's about the country. Because if there is a group that is so radical that do not respect the rights of 55 percent of the society and their policies on the base of oppression and regression, that means uh, how could how could they become a reliable partner for the world? How could they, uh, you know, ensure that Afghanistan soils are not used once again for military extremists? Because the more repressive they become, the more other military extremist groups try to use that vacuum and people's unhappiness. And therefore, Afghanistan can, can once again become a safe haven for military extremists, which could threaten the world's security. So it's not even a matter of politics or, or social issue. It is a matter of national security and an economical issue as well. What is the message? I mean, you have a, 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 a huge following. Lots of people uh, follow you on social media as well. What would you tell an Afghan girl now? What can she look forward to? How can, what can I say? I was devastated, disappointed, heartbroken yesterday when I saw tears coming out of the Afghan girls' um, eyes. It was, for, for them, it was tears. For us, it was blood coming out of our heart and our ear, uh, eyes. So um, I hope as a mother, um, that the Taliban do not take our girls hostage. Uh, they must be ashamed of the way they govern Afghanistan. Yeah. It's clear that they don't know how to govern. They must open for negotiation to inclusive government, respecting the diversity of Afghanistan, allowing our girls to go to school, because Afghanistan cannot live in marginalization with the rest of the Muslim world. Look at our neighbors. Look at the four Muslim countries. Look at right. Qatar, which was hosting negotiation for them. 15% of the Qatari women are more in school than the, the Qatari men. What Islam Taliban are representing? I don't understand this. So therefore, I think they have to f be accountable. They must feel responsible. And that the way they govern, it's not going to be sustainable. They must open for a political dialogue. Right. We, uh, my party is in, in Afghanistan. A lot of my party members are in Afghanistan. We are, uh, you know, uh, preparing for reactions, but we know that it's going to be very difficult. We try to keep the voices alive, but my plea also to international community will be that they shouldn't, you know, think that if everything is normal. Discrimination does not know any border. If today we normalize it in Afghanistan, tomorrow it can reach our own borders. So they, they must use their leverage their financial, their diplomatic leverage over Taliban to make them accountable, not only on opening the schools, but all also on respecting Afghanistan's diversity, inclusion, restoring constitutional order, and moving forward for a prosperous Afghanistan. Fawzia Kufi, we will leave it there for the time being, but thank you so much, and a pleasure to talk to you again. Thank you.
Something different now. Tasty, cheap and quick. That's the ideal meal for teens on a budget in Thailand. One Bangkok entrepreneur has tapped into that gnawing need for satisfaction by letting people buy their instant noodles, then cook them too. So many noodles, so little time. And that's the point of this Bangkok convenience shop. A fast meal made right on the spot with the flavors you love. The concept is new and unusual. We can customize our own dishes, and I think it's convenient. The price is also reasonable for students compared to eating at restaurants, where prices are quite high. Good Noodle enjoyed instant success when it opened last October. Thousands of mostly young customers come to browse the vast selection. More than 350 kinds of noodles from across Asia. Our goal is to make customers try the instant noodles rather than waiting to make them at home. They'll be able to choose their own toppings and instant noodles that they like, and they can cook it by themselves. And the cheap price, as low as 20 cents, makes this an experience that can be savored again and again and again. The good stuff. That's it for today. There's, of course, more from the region on our website, dw.com forward slash Asia. And as ever, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. We'll see you back here at the same time tomorrow. Bye-bye. Is the end of the pandemic in sight? We show what it could look like. A return to a new normal. And we visit those who are finding it difficult. Experiences. As COVID-19 cases keep rising, many business entities are affected and their revenue keeps going down. But together, we can fight COVID-19. Rumpi Enterprises provides you and your organization the safety you require in these hard times of the COVID-19 pandemic by using effective disinfectants procedures such as knockdown and residual disinfecting that helps prevent and get rid of COVID-19. We do knockdown and residual disinfecting procedures for homes, offices, hospitals,